Hi, we're at Pigeon Point in Tobago and we're about to go out with Johnny who's going to take us on a boat trip around Bukhari. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, hi, my name is John and I work with Scuba Adventure Safari and um, we're a dive operation based in Tobago. Uh, we're going to take you guys on a top side cruise of the Bonacord Lagoon area and Buku Reef. So we're not actually going to be doing any scuba diving, but we will be taking you to some of the lovely spots. We're just in no man's land at the moment and it's not actually an island even though it looks like one, it's actually a peninsula and we're about to enter the lagoon and have a look around. It seems to be very well preserved, it looks in fantastic condition, however um, there is a lot of pressure on the mangroves because of deforestation that's taken place. Um, they've removed mangrove in order to put um, land for people to build houses on and the whole area requires a very special sort of drainage which unfortunately is becoming more and more a problem the more people that live in this part of the island. Um, we do however have fantastic mangroves here. We've got four different kind of mangroves. I've learned a lot about the environment of Tobago which is so awesome because I think it's so important to be a an informed tourist and to be informed about the areas that you're going to because the last thing I want to do is to contribute to the problem you know I want to travel in a way that if anything helps the situation so I'm so glad that we learned about it and I'm excited to go swimming tell us about where we're at uh -huh. we're in Bonacord Lagoon which is um one of the parts of the Buku Reef Tour. Um, this is the mangrove area and this is the um, saltwater lagoon that's created as a result of it. We've got a little peninsula which is no man's land and um, that sort of closes the lagoon in. So from here it looks like we're actually in a lake. Mm -hmm. You can't even see the ocean mm -hmm. but it's right over there. And um, what, what happens around here? Like, are there any activities? Do people do things around here or is it just a place to relax? Or, you, you know, know, a lot of people come and moor their boats here so that um, they're safe from um, any sort of um, storm because mm -hmm. um, it's very protected in here. Hence the fact that it is a nursery mm -hmm. lots of wildlife species. Um, but yeah, I mean, most people, apart from mooring their boats in here, just come here to do um, maybe a bit of water skiing, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a bit of wakeboarding or something like that, where it's nice and flat and calm and you need calm water for that. And it's like a lake here. Mm -hmm. Well, today has been a little bit different than what I was expecting. Um, I actually learned a lot about the area and learned that just because something looks like everything's okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the case. Um, when you think of polluted waters, you tend to think of the waters like the Bund down in Shanghai or the Ganges where you see obvious pollution. But I've learnt today that there's a lot going on under the water here that, you know, I wouldn't have been aware of otherwise. So I think that when you're travelling, you need to be aware of these sorts of issues. And while you might not be able to do a lot to help the environment, just little simple things like collecting your rubbish and taking it with you at the end of the day can just, you know, add to the solution. And hopefully the government from there can start taking the appropriate steps to conserve something so beautiful like this. Alright, I'm going to go snorkeling now.